There's a presidential election in Iran next week. President Hassan Rouhani is on course for victory against not one, but two ultra-conservative challengers, and it might be close. Internationally, Rouhani has received praise for agreeing to the nuclear deal and received criticism for his government's support of Bashar al-Assad. But at home, many Iranians are more concerned about the dire state of the economy and the lack of freedom. Has Rouhani really been the reformer? He said he'd be. Joining me to debate this in the arena are Mohammad Morandi, a prominent Iranian political analyst and academic at the University of Tehran, and Mazia Bahari, an Iranian-Canadian journalist and human rights activist who in 2009 was imprisoned by the Iranian government over false claims of espionage. Thank you both for joining me on Upfront. Uh, Mazia Bahari, it's been almost four years since Hassan Rouhani was elected president of Iran. A lot of people were hopeful about Iran's reformist agenda under Rouhani, um, especially since he came after eight years of Ahmadinejad. Uh, do you think Rouhani lived up to expectations? Has he succeeded in reforming Iran, opening it up to social economic progress? Well, I think maybe people had wrong expectations from Rouhani because you have to understand that Iran is like an absolute monarchy. And the president of Iran is like a prime minister in an absolute monarchy. The absolute monarch, of course, is the supreme leader of Iran, Ayatollah Khamenei. So the president of Iran does not really have actual power in order to open up the country or do the reforms that he wishes to do. But I think that President Rouhani has an acceptable track record in terms of certain things that he wanted to do. Of course, there, has, there have been human rights abuses, there have been suppression of the press, and there have been suppression of some of the supporters of President Rouhani by the judiciary, by the revolutionary guards, by the different institutions that are under control of the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei. Uh, Mohammad Morandi, uh, he has an acceptable track record, says Mazia Bahari, but he isn't as far ahead in the polls as some assumed he might be at this stage, given his record. Well, I think this is basically a caricature of reality. Uh, elections in Iran are very important. Uh, the president has uh, a great deal of power. Uh, the turnout for Iranian presidential elections is always high, and that shows that it's meaningful for people. Uh, if, if it really wasn't meaningful, then that we would it would, we would be implying that people are just foolish and voting for something that's not important. The leader himself is answerable to a council that is itself elected by the people. And we have parliament, we have local elections. So I think that the dominant narrative in the West is something that we really should uh, not take too seriously. Dr. Rouhani, or President Rouhani, he is having a difficult situation, uh, contrary to the previous presidents who usually won their re-elections with landslides. Is the main reason for his difficulty, Mohammed Morandi, the state of the economy? Uh, because on the one hand, inflation has dropped from 40% when he came to power to 12% now. Economic growth is up. On the other hand, unemployment still at 13%. Uh, youth unemployment's at nearly 30%. Have ordinary Iranians felt the benefits from President Rouhani's nuclear deal, for example, and the lifting of sanctions? Doesn't look like they have. Yes, I think that's the, by far the major issue. According to polls, the overwhelming majority of Iranians are uh, concerned about unemployment, and after that, it's wages. Uh, the economy has not benefited from the uh, JCPOA, the nuclear agreement. Uh, on the, it is important, though, to note that all the candidates, in, including the, mo the most important ones, They've uh, voiced their support for the JCPOA. They've said that uh, Iran uh, will continue to pursue the, and, and uh, implement the JCPOA. Uh, Mazia, uh, isn't the problem uh, for someone like yourself and the critique you advanced that it's all very well to say there's human rights problems in Iran, and clearly there are human rights abuses in Iran, but for average Iranians going to the polls next Friday, human rights might not be top of their list, and that's what pr the president of Iran is responsible for in their eyes, getting the economy right. Well, of course, may, many people think that the economy is the main uh, reason to go to the polls, and they, that's why they think that they have to elect maybe another candidate, because they think that uh, President Rouhani has failed to improve the economy. But also, we have to understand that President Rouhani, again, as a prime minister in an absolute monarchy, is not in charge of the Iranian economy. 
many economic, economic institutions in Iran, many industrial institutions in Iran are under the supervision, direct supervision of Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. In, uh, uh, the foundations, the industries that are held by the Revolutionary Guard, and they are not really accountable. And I agree with uh, Dr. Marandi that uh, the elections are important in Iran, and I think people go to Iran to vote in order to express themselves, to use the very little space that they have every four years to express their opinions. And sometimes these uh, expressions of opinions are suppressed. Mohammed Morandi, let me put that point uh, that Mazia Bahari made about uh, Ayatollah Khamenei being the absolute monarch, which you pushed back against earlier. Um, but isn't it the case, as Mazia Bahari points out, that he does control a vast array of important institutions, from the armed forces to the security services to the intelligence agencies to the appointments to the judiciary? I mean, his title kind of gives it away, supreme leader, and he's unelected. Well, supreme leader is an English term. That's not what it is in Persian. Actually, that is another construct of the West. Does he not have those powers over the judiciary, the armed forces, the security services, the intelligence agencies? No, actually, the intelligence uh, minister of intelligence is uh, chosen by the president and approved by parliament. But uh, he is himself elected by a body. Uh, that body can remove him the leader whenever they like. That is their responsibility and they have that right. In theory, On the other hand, in theory. the uh, president, the previous president, Mr. Ahmadinejad, when he was the president of the country, he was the person who everyone in the West was saying is a threat to the world. If he had no authority, then why was there so much fear mongering? Ro president Rouhani or any other president doesn't have authority but President Ahmadinejad did have authority. He was going to destroy the world. Let me just ask Mohammed Morandi, just to be clear, for our viewers watching across the world, no one is saying, I don't think, that the president of Iran has no power. But surely you're not suggesting he has as much power as the quote-unquote supreme leader. Surely you're not saying he has uh, room to maneuver on his own uh, or go against the supreme leader if he wanted to. Surely you're not suggesting that. He is the number one authority in the country, and the president is the number two authority in the country. And the very fact that in the previous election, the turnout for the president was 73%, and in the pre election before that, it was 83%, shows how important elections are in Iran. Mazia, what's your response to that? The response to that is that people are trying to use any space that they can in order to express themselves. The president, presidential election is very important in Iran. The president is very important authority, as Dr. Marandi said. Uh, it, he is the number two authority in Iran. But the difference between number one and number two is huge. And the powers of the president are limited hugely by an account, unaccountable leader who is the supreme leader of Iran. Well, let me, and let me put that... Let me the put main that. reason that people are going back to no, the... the yeah, they're going back to the polls is that they look around in their region, they look at the situation in Iraq, they look at the situation in Syria. People are not interested in revolutions. People want reforms. And people are giving a chance to the government of Iran, to the supreme leader of Iran, every four years, to reform itself. Mazia Bahari says there's a huge gap between one and two. If I'm an Iranian voter, why can I only vote for number two? Why can't I vote for number one if I'm supposed to be living in a democracy? Well, in Iran, they choose a council of experts that itself chooses the leader. And the system is devised in a way so that the leader is someone who is not uh, going out and promoting himself here and there for election. Mazia Bahari, you were famously, infamously uh, held by the Iranian authorities in 2009 for 118 days. Uh, you gave a coerced confession on TV. Uh, do you believe the situation for journalists, for human rights activists, for civil society groups is significantly better today in Iran uh, under Rouhani than it was in 2009 under Ahmadinejad? No, I think it, the situation is worse because the Revolutionary Guards Intelligence Unit and the Iranian judiciary, they have found different ways to intimidate journalists, to suppress the uh, freedom of expression, and to imprison journalists and force them into exile in many cases. 
So uh, again, I don't blame it on President Rouhani because he has very limited power. I think the blame is squarely on uh, Ayatollah Khamenei's shoulders. And also, Dr. Marandi, since uh, you're talking about uh, the regime being respond. so innocent. He says that people are satisfied for, with President Rouhani, but on the other hand, he's saying that the situation in Iran today is worse than it was before. This is, uh, uh, again, this doesn't make sense. Anything that makes Iran look bad or s that fits within that narrative is logical, even though there are inconsistencies within the narrative. Uh, Maziar, before we finish, there are hardliners in Iran, we're told, who want to tear up the nuclear deal, just as there are hardliners in Washington, D.C., in the Trump administration, who would love to tear up that deal. Are you worried about the future of the nuclear deal? Well, I don't think that there is any danger in terms of Iranians tearing up the nuclear deal because, as Dr. Marandi said, all the candidates, even the hardliners, they have said that they're going to respect the deal. I think there is more dangers of Americans trying to tear up the deal. I don't think there is a danger in okay. Iran. And will the re-election of uh, President Rouhani, Mohammad Marandi, be a vindication of the nuclear deal that he risked a lot of political capital on to sign? I don't know. I can't comment on that in particular. We'd have to see the polls. But I think that, in general, there is a consensus among the different politicians and different political factions in Iran about the nuclear agreement, that they will pursue it, and they will implement it, and they will demand that the Americans, contrary to what they're doing now, that the Americans implement it. Uh, I think that at the end of the day, President Rouhani will be judged on the economy. He has his arguments. His uh, opponents have their arguments. We'll have to see. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for joining me in the arena. That's our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.